going to work every day may not be your idea of fun. And while work may not be fun, it shouldn't be a place that you fear or dread. The workplace should be free of health and safety hazards to the greatest extent possible, and protection should be provided when hazards do exist. You should also be provided a work environment that is positive and free from harassment. Unfortunately, many people are subjected to work environment situations that are not positive or free from harassment. Harassment based on race, color, sex, religion, or national origin is prohibited in the workplace according to Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. The Equal Employment Opportunity Commission EEOC, was created with the passage of this act to oversee and enforce the provisions of the act. While the EEOC addresses the various forms of harassment equally with the same oversight and enforcement, this training program will only cover the area of sexual harassment. According to the EEOC, a large number of sexual harassment cases are reported yearly. Sexual harassment in the workplace is harmful to the company for which you work, its employees, and you. This training video will discuss sexual harassment and provide you with the necessary knowledge to define sexual harassment, identify potential victims and harassers, identify conduct and behavior that is not appropriate in the workplace, help prevent such harassment, report incidents of possible sexual harassment, and increase the chances of having a positive work environment. According to the EEOC, Sexual harassment is defined as any unwelcome sexual advances, requests for sexual favors, and verbal or physical conduct of a sexual nature when submission to this conduct is made either explicitly or implicitly a term or condition of an individual's employment. Submission to or rejection of such conduct by an individual is used as the basis for employment decisions affecting such individual and such conduct creates an intimidating, hostile, or offensive work environment. Two types of sexual harassment are generally recognized, quid pro quo and hostile work environment. Quid pro quo. This phrase basically means something for something. This type of sexual harassment is more easily identified and usually happens between a supervisor and employee. For instance, a manager or supervisor promises to give you a pay raise, promotion, transfer, etc. in exchange for some sexual favor. Or possibly you are passed over for promotion, not given a pay increase, transferred, etc. because you did not agree to the sexual favor. In both situations, sexual harassment has occurred. A supervisor is defined as anyone that directs the daily work activities of employees or is authorized to undertake or recommend employment actions, hiring, firing, promoting, demoting, and reassigning. Hostile work environment. This type of sexual harassment is more difficult to define, but the majority of sexual harassment cases fall under this category. Comments or conduct based on sex, sexually oriented material, or other offensive material is considered harassment when they unreasonably interfere with an employee's work and are unwelcome, severe, or pervasive. The comments or conduct are also considered harassment if they create a work environment that is intimidating, hostile, or offensive. Single or isolated incidents of sexual misconduct generally do not create an environment that is considered hostile. A hostile environment claim usually requires proof of a pattern of offensive conduct. The more severe the harassment though, the less need to show a repetitive pattern. To be considered unwelcome, severe or pervasive enough to constitute sexual harassment, the activity must also be serious enough that a reasonable person would find it offensive. A common misconception is that the employee being asked for sexual favors is the only victim in a sexual harassment case. Many times there will be more than just one victim when sexual harassment occurs. 
an employee who was passed over for a promotion because someone else received the promotion due to quid pro quo harassment is also a victim. If a hostile work environment is created by a person's unwelcome actions, then it is possible that more than one employee is affected. For instance, if an employee is always telling crude sexual jokes, several employees may be made uncomfortable by the jokes. More than one employee is affected and could possibly claim sexual harassment. A victim is anyone who is adversely affected by sexual harassment in the workplace. Sexual harassment victims can be female or male. Harassment can occur between members of the opposite sex, male to female or female to male, as well as members of the same sex, male to male or female to female. Harassment can come from many sources and even from outside the company. Managers, supervisors, co-workers, vendors, suppliers, delivery drivers, contractors, and sales representatives can all be capable of engaging in harassing conduct. Our society is sexually oriented in many ways. You will find sexually suggestive material in many areas of life, including books and magazines, advertising, movies, internet, TV shows, and radio. Our ideas, thoughts, and actions are influenced by what we see and hear. Many behaviors and actions that are portrayed in the media are not appropriate in the workplace and could constitute sexual harassment. As an employee, you should understand that some things you might do and say at home or with friends outside of work are not acceptable at work. Many actions are considered or could be considered forms of sexual harassment in the workplace. Such actions include, but are not limited to, staring or leering in a suggestive manner, making offensive remarks about someone's looks, clothing and or body, touching, pinching, patting and brushing against someone in a manner that creates an uncomfortable feeling, telling sexual or offensive jokes or making sexual gestures, displaying sexually related material such as posters or calendars, sending sexually related material via emails, letters or notes. You are responsible for your actions at work. Things you say and do will affect those around you. You must keep in mind that the people with which you work with are usually not family members or friends with which you spend your time with outside of work. They may have different views and beliefs than you about different things. Some things might not be offensive to your family and friends, but could be to your co-workers. You must keep your behavior at work neutral in the sense that you do not offend, intimidate, hurt, and or embarrass your co-workers. Along with keeping your conduct appropriate at work, you should also watch for inappropriate conduct by others in your workplace. The best prevention is to be proactive. Inform others when you feel they are out of line. Many times the person engaging in the inappropriate behavior does not realize they are offending others. When asked to stop, most will oblige and be surprised that they had offended you or others. If the person does not stop, then you should immediately report the behavior to the person your company has designated. Your company should have at least two different people to whom you can report harassment. Usually your manager or immediate supervisor is one and a human resources officer is another. These people will be outlined in your company's sexual harassment policy. Your company should have a sexual harassment policy that strictly prohibits sexual harassment. You should have been given training on the policy when initially hired. Additional training should be given according to your company's training guidelines. The company policy should outline many important areas that you, as an employee, need to understand, know, and follow. Some things that your company policy should cover include the company's definition of sexual harassment, company standards for dress code, workplace behavior, and allowable personal belongings, pictures, calendars, magazines, etc. Names of appropriate personnel and departments to which employees can report possible sexual harassment. Statements assuring confidentiality of complaints. 
statements assuring no retaliation will be allowed, grievance procedures, possible remedies, and corrective disciplinary procedures. Sexual harassment can have long-lasting negative effects and be difficult to overcome for everyone involved. Sexual harassment can do great harm to an individual, their family, co-workers, and the company. There is a great amount of guilt and shame that victims wrongly feel. Stress, anger, frustration, helplessness, depression, and hopelessness are other emotions that victims might experience. The family of the victim can also have many of the same feelings and problems that the victim experiences, either as a direct result of the harassment or due to the family member having to deal with the harassment. Many other negative experiences are possible, such as financial difficulties, physical ailments, and relationship problems. Sexual harassment can also be harmful to the company. Harassment can have the same emotional and physical effect on the victim's co-workers as it does on the victim. In addition, employee morale generally declines, productivity can suffer, the reputation of the company can be compromised, and financial burdens can be incurred due to lawsuits and settlements. So what do you do when you feel you are a victim of sexual harassment or you have witnessed sexual harassment? As stated earlier, you should first inform the person that you are offended by their actions and would like for them to stop. Many times this will resolve the issue and no further action will be necessary. If you are not comfortable in confronting the person or their behavior is blatantly inappropriate, you should inform a company designated person immediately. If you and the company representative believe the actions were not intended to be harassing in nature, the company representative will discuss the issue with the person and insist the behavior stop. Again, no additional actions may be needed if the perpetrator ceases the inappropriate behavior. If the actions are blatantly inappropriate, then the company representative will begin the task of investigating the incident immediately after being notified. To assist in the investigation, you should write down all information concerning the incident, including date and time of the incident, location where incident took place, persons involved, including any possible witnesses, detailed description of what happened, and any other pertinent information that will help in the investigation. Your company's sexual harassment policy will outline the exact steps that will be taken during this time. Steps to stop the unwelcome action and secure your well-being, or that of the victim, should be the first priority of the process. A fact-finding investigation will then ensue. The time needed to conduct the investigation will depend upon the particular circumstances of the case. You can rest assured that any measures taken during the investigation should not affect you in a negative manner. And if sexual harassment is found to have occurred, the disciplinary actions taken against the harasser should not affect you in a negative manner. Measures will be taken to restore you, or the victim, to the position you would have held had the harassment not occurred. Such measures might include an apology from the harasser, reinstatement, promotion, wage increase, replacement of time taken off, and correction of any other effect caused by the incident. Your employer takes this issue very seriously and will take all steps necessary to not only create a safe and harassment-free workplace, but to correct any situation that occurs. This video program has provided you with some important information about sexual harassment. As an employee, you can make a difference in your workplace. Always be aware that your actions, language, and personal belongings affect your coworkers. Be cautious and do not do anything that might offend or be construed as harassment. Sexual harassment can be very detrimental to everyone involved. If you witness harassment or feel harassed, ask the person to stop the offending behavior. 
If this does not correct the situation, report it immediately to the appropriate personnel. Your company wants you to be safe at work and will take the measures needed to ensure your safety and to eliminate the harassment. Everyone benefits in a workplace free from sexual harassment.